some of this stuff. Now, normally we would have this attached, but it, it wasn't cooperating this morning, so I have to depend on the uh, webcam from the, uh, uh, but we could have had this kind of moving around, uh, which, which, which still works okay. Uh, but what we usually do is we film everything, and as you, it's on right now, and then afterwards, like we, can I show your faces? It's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then after what we do is uh, we we download all the videos and every all the materials, everything, all the uh, media stuff on our website because uh, there's a lot of people following our campaign, and then they can see what happened in Brandon, sort of thing. And and as a result, you know what we're hoping is that by the time we finish this in in Argentina, that literally there'll be thousands of media stories, you know, and, and just, and it'll be really cool for the students as well, like, because uh, they're taking an active part in this, so. Okay. Awesome. So, yep. Okay. Yep, sure. So, um, why did you want to do this, Alaska to Argentina? Um, well, it's step-by-step -step seventh campaign, and um, about 14 years ago, that's where it all started. Uh, I was literally uh, uh, on my deathbed. Uh, I had like hours left to live. And a, uh, the only thing that was going to save my life was a liver transplant. I was in a Toronto hospital and time was running out. Like literally I had like hours left to live. Uh, and then the call came in that there was a liver available. And um, after I woke up from that operation, can you handle the camera, please? What? And the, the torch is ready outside. Yeah, look at the, the, um, the ambulance in front of the sign over here. Oh, okay. Okay, good. And, and so, uh, after I woke up from the operation, I, I had to work. And, and the first thought was in my head was that, you know, And so uh, I was thinking of that grieving family and also thinking the courage that it took, you know, during during a uh, uh, a very tragic situation in their lives, losing somebody and then having the ability to make that decision. Uh, that sort of was compelled me at that moment when I woke up to say thank you to, to that donor friend. I don't know who it is to the state, but uh, it's kept anonymous. Uh, but I also was thinking that three floors below me in an emergency room at the Toronto Hospital, there was people unfortunately arriving and dying, but their organs were literally going to the wastebasket. And on my floor, every other day somebody was dying because an organ wasn't available. And the person that saved my life, that one physician also saved five other people. So there were six of us that were saved as a result of this one physician. And I was thinking, there's something wrong with this picture, that there's so many organs going to lose. And, and something, you know, has to be done because nobody was talking about this back in the time. And it was from that moment uh, that I woke up from the operation that I just devoted the rest of my life. And uh, I carried the torch that you see out there uh, across Canada. And uh, I got a call from Pope John Paul II. Not from him directly. No, no, I understand. It was a uh, secretary. And at first I thought it was my friend Billy pulling a prank on me. Because every morning he he called me in the morning and then he was Larry King or somebody. And I always fall for it. So I said, Billy, I know it's you and you really do got a poor coalition accent. You better brush up on it. And it was really somebody who got it that said you put the quote or something for me. And and so he forgave me, because he said he also had a friend like Billy, so he understood it, you know. But he said that the Pope wanted to um, meet with me, and he heard what I was doing, and if 
if I could bring the torch there. And I did. I brought it there, and he blessed it, and encouraged the entire world to be organ donors when he blessed it. And he called over the donation of Jane Wine at the Bob. And he also said, when you go back to Canada, pass the torch to the students, which we did. Uh, I met a young 10-year-old boy from Sarnia, Ontario, uh, who carried the torch across Sarnia. And I didn't know until the end that uh, he was on the waiting list. Like, he, he lifted up his shirt and he showed me all the scars because he had to do all these operations just to stay alive. And he said, I'm on the waiting list and, you know, I'm waiting for a liver. And, and he goes, and one day I would like to give it this torch across Canada, you know. So just to make a long story short, three years later, he got his way. And it was called Christopher's Wish. He was still on the waiting list. And we arranged a 200-city tour for him. It was called Christopher's Wish. And he had a beeper. Well, he was carrying that torch in each one of these uh, cities. And it was Christopher that literally inspired all these students. Like, uh, Hundreds of thousands of them, you know, like at each and every one of the uh, cities that we went to. And as a result of the inspiring them, um, they kept in touch with him. And literally, his email box would just get so full, and they were like, we had to create new, you know. And, and so, I was thinking the Pope must have had something. He must have known something. Because the enthusiasm that was created was so tremendous that we said, well, you know what the next step is? We've got to create 100 students from these 100,000 and make them each a student torch chapter. Because they were so well versed now on this issue. And that's what we did on our on our sixth campaign. Uh, that was uh, two years ago. It was called SOS 4000. We organized 100 cities where each student became a student torch champion. And the whole event revolved uh, around that student. And that campaign went so successful across Canada that we said, now we got to go to the next level. And that's why we're organizing our seventh campaign, uh, which is the SOS of America. So this campaign, we, start, we started off in Alaska. And we're making our way through 36 countries. We're making 300 stops. And literally, there's thousands of students that are being recruited, that have been joining in since we started the Canadian League. And what we're hoping, uh, by obtaining all this footage and keeping in touch and doing our Facebook, you know, uh, Facebook group, our website group, our YouTube group, our Twitter group, you know, getting all the social networks involved. Uh, what we're hoping is that one day, collectively, we can get all these students together. Somehow, we'll, f we'll figure out how, and just imagine one collective voice of students. I mean, just in itself, having students from 36 countries involved in anything, in itself. So, in this case, it will be to really bring organ and tissue donation to the world stage. And that's what our ultimate mission is. Uh, it's to bring this issue to the world stage. There's a lot of issues that may are on the world stage as, as we speak, like climate change, and, uh, AIDS, you know. But organ and tissue donation is, <coughs> and every country uh, has a, a desperate need for more organ donations. So this isn't something where we need it to find know, millions of dollars of dollars to find a cure. Uh, the cure is somehow inspiring the world in becoming organ donors. So by having students being the ambassadors, uh, in that way, uh, we feel by their passion and their enthusiasm, as, we, as uh, anybody that visits our website will see, uh, they will be the true ambassadors, the spokespeople, you know, that bring this issue to the world. So it, it can be done overnight, and we won't do it for funny man, you know, but that's why we call it step by step with each other. As we're going from community to community, we're building the momentum. 
So we're making a stop here in Bradley today. Uh, we're hoping everybody in Bradley uh, will join in, you know, and, and hopefully uh, encourage them to sign their donor cards. Now, do you have students lined up here in Bradley? No, not today. Today was like one of our off days. Uh, we usually, in every stop that we made, uh, well, Saskatoon, we would drive down on Sunday. So we didn't have uh, folks there either, or students, but every other community. And um, so far, there might there'll probably be another few by the time we finish. We're we'll be making stops similar to this. Or, you know, but we thought it was important to still stop because it, this message is 24 hours a day. You know, there's no um, time. To, you know, so uh, we're hoping that as a result of stopping in Brandon, uh, with your stories today to the community that they can tune in to see what you know the, uh, students uh, are doing what what the torch is all about um, and and they can get inspired to sign their own over what made you choose the route that you chose well we started off I'll be, I'll be really yeah, like usually you guys you know want to really promote they go try and go for a bigger city well, what made you choose the route for the the Western Hotel? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little story. Uh, this key here uh, belongs to Bobby Kirchhoff's bank. And Bobby was really nice enough to give us his bag because our bag in our last campaign broke down. And he gave us his bag, and that took us pretty much throughout our campaign. So I, I mean, I came through Brandon during my walk in 2000, and I had an excellent warm welcome here, and I'll never forget it. So we always included Brandon in our campaign. We weren't, uh, you know, we were a little short in trying to get a school in time and everything, and sometimes that can happen. Like, you know, we just uh, weren't able to, to get some kids involved today. But we, I, I said, I can't miss out on Brandon. You know, I've got too much history here, and you know, some folks will probably remember when we came through in 2000. Some folks will remember when we did Christopher's Wish. And I, I know a lot of folks will remember Bobby Patola because he lives here. Uh, so, you know, I carry this key you know, because it was very important, you know. And, and so Brandon is very important. And, uh, you know, I, I know the, the folks in Brandon, they're all warm people. Uh, days in helped us out tonight, or last night, the accommodations, Applebee's fed us. Uh, you know, so we always get a warm welcome here. And why would we want to miss Brandon? I mean, you know, if we didn't get the students, uh, why would, you know. So we're here today, and, and we're hoping that the message still is strong enough to get people to come on the Has it worked so far? Yes, it has. Uh, over the years, uh, we've had numerous people that have called us, especially people on the waiting list, that are thanking us because we're bringing them hope. Uh, the people that are present on the waiting list, there's over 4,000, and I know they'll see your story. Um, they're, they're feeling like nobody's paying attention to them. And, and, you know, days or hours are taken away, you know, and either they're going to go to the work, or they're, they're going to celebrate by receiving life. And so what's stopping that is the message. You know, if people aren't becoming organ donors, there's, it's going to be continuous that organs are going to go in the, in the waste. So uh, it's, it's that important to give hope. Because hope can, you know, have a person that's waiting, wait a little bit longer. You know, and, and that's sometimes what it'll take. And, and so we're, we're, we want to say to everybody on the waiting list, whether they're here in Brampton or the province of Manitoba, uh, to, to please, uh, you know, don't give up and be assured that, you know, people, when they hear this message, don't respond. So that's why it's so important. You know, and it's a simple message. You know, please sign your urban donor card. Discuss the wish with your family. And young Christopher used to say it the best. Please don't take your organs to heaven. Heaven knows we need them here on earth. So, I made that pretty awesome. Yeah.
Yes, he's still alive. Now, unfortunately, he didn't receive his liver transplant yet. Because when he did that walk, like he, su he suffered with a terrible disease called malaria tracer. Most of the infants, because you usually get that right after birth, they don't survive past the year, uh, two years old. And somehow he had the, you know, he survived through 10 years of uh, operations. And when he carried that torch across Canada, we were prepared, you know, because we were alerting all the hospitals just in case he got sick. And he never got sick once during that whole year. And somehow that disease mysteriously disappeared. Now he credits the torch, you know, and somehow the torch gave the power to combat his disease. But if you know Christopher, he's a fighter. And if he, you know, he's a survivor. And so he hasn't received his liver as of yet, but he's going to join us. Uh, when we reach Toronto to stay with me the, rest, the next two years. So I think he was the chosen one, so to speak, when he used those words. When the Pope said to pass the torch to, to the students, he was the student I ran into. So there's something very spiritual about all this as well, you know, with the torch and with everything else. I mean, in the sense that, um, you know, it, it takes, I think, some sometimes some uh, soul searching whether you're going to be an organ donor. And this, in, in a spiritual sense, not a real religious sense, in a spiritual sense, it's almost like, well, if I don't make my organs, maybe that'll be good karma. Because as a result of making that connection, people are living, and the families, and I've met many donor families. They have a sense that their loved one is living still in other people. And that's the spiritual part. So I, I think this can give people time to think about their lives and what they would like to pass on. I mean, we always know that there's wills to pass on your your houses, your material stuff. And I don't want the other things, like, you know, gifts that we call them that can be passed on to save lives. So, in a sense, this is very spiritual as well. Ah, that's a question. That's great. Okay. And you got our website, too. Yes, yes. And, and if anybody wants to help, they can make donations to our website as well. There's, so, I think we're probably ready to do the torch then. Yes, that's good. Okay? And there are some young people. Okay, if you can, Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, he's going to instruct uh, you, Melody. More, more around the, the, the front here. Okay, no, we just got two more coming. Okay, no problem. So there's Angela and Carla. Okay. Oh, yeah, they, they, I radioed them, they're coming right now. Okay. Uh, maybe just watch so they can go inside. Two more to leave <laughs> but it's, it's a really good program. You can really help them. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Thank you. You guys are doing a great job, really. Thank you. Um, so where are you guys going after this? Winnipeg. And I'm just waiting from the Premier's office because, you know, each capital city we uh, usually get the Premier to come out. Yeah, so it'll be a pretty big story in Winnipeg as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. Are you heading down uh, like where? Thunder we're Bay and then through Ontario to St. John's, Newfoundland. Oh, and then okay. we're going into Maine uh, from New Brunswick. And then oh, yeah, okay. zigzagging. So then you go from Maine down the eastern U.S. Yeah, and then up and down, up and down about oh, three. Yeah, you can actually, if you go to our website, it's probably all the like itineraries are right the entire two-year schedule. Is that everybody, Melody, or you? Two more. Okay, no problem. amazing part is we're doing this with no budget so to know that every day is an adventure you know on where we're gonna sleep who's gonna feed us and so you know knowing the goodwill of people that are coming out yeah. Yeah. and freezing <laughs> and freezing so, so you're not in such a, a straight line of thought <laughs> so, uh, actually, can I have you guys come forward a bit? Straight up, <laughs> like, don't tilt us. Just come forward, forward a bit. 
there. Actually, a little bit, a little bit more. Actually, I'll, everybody just take a, a couple I'm steps forward to it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna light it now. So, now that I'm gonna light it. <laughs> There's no wind, or a bit of a wind. Just keep it up then. That's it. Yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. You sure? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can you film this? Well, we just want to get. Is it recording right now? Yeah, it is. It is. It's got a seven-hour battery, so I can edit. It's an editing job. <laughs> Because Bobby's still probably around somewhere in Canada. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank it, you so much. Oh, no, thank, thank you. you. That was great. Good luck on your journey. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if you, if you can uh, this is put how we on put the. It out. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Which cup was this one? At uh, the Metal Place. Metal, okay. uh, OPP. OPP. Put it on the witch? Uh, if you can let, you know, the, about Bobby Curtola, if you can mention that. Bobby Curtola? Yeah. That, you know. Uh, Bobby Curtola so live, lives here then, uh, in uh, Brandon. Yeah. And uh, just and that a message to Bobby, wherever you are, uh, that, that we're always thinking of him, you know, because he, he has played a really important part in this. Okay. Okay. Hey, here's your video camera. Oh, back. thanks. Okay. Um, so, here. Okay, just put it there. I'm just going to get my other glass. Oh, shit. 